Okay, hi. Uh, this is going to be a quick uh, video here. There's a couple things I want to talk about. Um, so I didn't have any, anybody show up for the help session today to ask some questions. So this week um, we're at kind of uh, what we're calling week seven here, but this whole week is set aside for our uh, midterm exam. Okay, so you should be reviewing and studying things. Um, but I had one or two things to say about assignment six. I just returned this back to everybody. Um, but for one thing, I mean, I had at least three or four submissions, either groups or students, um, who I had given feedback, at, you know, at least for the previous two assignments, telling them to correct something, and they hadn't did it yet, okay? So in particular, you know, it's a requirement that everybody um, provides documentation for all the functions that you do for these assignments, okay? Um, and, you know, I had at least three or four groups uh, that were doing that. Okay, so I just returned those back to those students uh, ungraded. Okay, but kind of what I, I wanted to cover here is I want to make certain everybody is looking at the feedback that I give. Okay, so, you know, if, if, if I'm giving you feedback about something that you need to correct or address, I mean, you really need to do that. If, if you go out and, and get a job and are working on something and you're getting feedback from your supervisors and you're ignoring that, you're not following that, I mean, you're not going to do well on, on those assignments, you know, so th these are things that should be easy to correct, but, but, so I, I'm, I'm just a bit concerned. I'm not certain if people are just don't know about the feedback yet or or if they really do, but they're just not reading it or not following it. OK, so I want to make certain that that I mean, I do return back for the program assignments. Um, um, a, a file called like assignment six evaluation .md, right? So if you go to the assignments and, and, and you go in there, I believe, um, yeah, I'm, I'm viewing this as a student. So I believe after I've returned it back for you, there should be something out here where you can click and redown and, and download the assignment six evaluation .md file, right? With my feedback, my evaluation. Uh, the, the .md file is a markdown file. So I just wanted to show that. So I, I, I downloaded um, a, a file that I gave um, of, of some feedback evaluation that I gave for a student, um, although I changed the name in this here. So if you, if you download that, um, a, a nice way to, to view these is inside of like Visual Studio Code because uh, let me just open this up. I mean, the, the markdown file, um, is just a, it's a plain text file. So it's a plain text file, like a C source file or whatever. So th there's markup. There's like these pound signs to, to represent level one headers and, and, and pound pound would represent like a level two header. Um, and then these things like this represent tables that you can render and stuff like that. I mean, you could just read this as plain text. Another thing I use a lot of in these reports is the, the three back ticks allow you to create code blocks or um, literal text blocks here, okay? But this is meant to be rendered in like HTML. So, so this isn't really normally how you would look at this. Uh, single quotes you can use for literals. So I usually put things like um, function names and stuff inside of single quotes. Um, but if you wanted to, you could render this. Um, so in Visual Studio Code, if you have a markdown file open, um, you could like right click on this and say, um, open the preview or you could use control shift V to get a, a, um, a the, the rendered markdown here. Let me, let me close this off here. So you, you can compare this. So notice, so a level one header gets um, rendered as, as a header. Um, and um, uh, these things here get re rendered as tables, right? Um, these triple back quotes get rendered then as these code blocks or these literal text blocks and so on, right? But this makes a nice, more readable kind of thing if you, if you look at the rendered or, or the preview of the markdown here, right? So normally when I give you feedback, I, I give you a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, you know, if you got everything correct, you might not get a lot of feedback. But if you have incorrect things or incorrect style, so if you have incorrect code or bugs or things, I usually give you comments on the code execution comments, um, and, and I'll usually try and debug it at least a little bit and give you some hint about where the bug was or what was doing wrong. If you have style comments, if you're not following the style guidelines for the class, I'll, I'll usually give those in the style comment kind of things here. So, um, 
so specifically for, for this one, I, I returned for a couple of people that you're not giving the function documentation. So I've gone over this before. So let me show you that. Um, um, so, so if I give you a comment about style documentation, so like uh, for the quick sort that HPP, there's these things, these are just comment blocks, but these are used for what are known as code documentation. So in, inline code documentation. So there should be one of these headers at the top of every file and you should, you know, update this information correctly with your name, um, your ID. Uh, if you're a, if you're a group, you really don't have to give me your your all your um, CW ID since those are really supposed to be private. Um, but you should tell me what IDE you're using um, and so on. But more specifically, besides the file header, there should be what are known as function headers or function documentation. And again, this is just a, a block comment in, in C or C++ comments here. So slash star opens the comments and, and star slash closes the comment block, okay? But we use a few special tags to make these doc oxygen documentation, okay? So in particular, you have to have the, the slash star star. The two stars is important for doc, doc oxygen documentation. And then you have to do the format correctly. So the format is that the, the line after the two stars should have like one, two or three words, which is a short description, right? And then you should have a longer description, which is at least one sentence or maybe a couple of sentences on the lines after that, all right? And then all the parameters for the function have to be documented using at pram tag. Okay, so I like to have a blank line. So I mean, there's there's a star here, and all these stars are lined up um, in like column two. So column one, so star here, but all these are in column two. Um, and then parameters. So since there's three parameters for this function here in assignment six, you have to have three at params. And then after the at param tag, you have the act, the, the, this has to match. So the name of the parameter for the function should be the same as the name is given after the at param tag. And then you should have at least one sentence documenting each of these parameters, okay? Um, and then there's another tag. So if, if, if your function is a value returning function, there should be another blank. Um, and then one of these at returns tag, and then you should document the, the return value from the function, okay? Um, using this at returns. And, and then at return, the thing after the at returns should be the type. So since this function returns an integer value, you should say int. And then again, you should have at least one sentence. You know, should, these should be full English sentences. They should be readable, right? But, but this should document at least one sentence or a couple sentences documenting the return value. So if there's no, if, if the function isn't a value returning function, you don't need to have the at returns, um, but, if, but if it is, then you, you're required to have that, okay? <coughs> so um, if you look down at the bottom here, I, I give the report of, um, of the output from running the, the doc oxygen documentation um, on your, your code documentation, okay? And, and, um, this again. This is the um, this was the markdown file that I had for somebody. Um, let me bring up the preview instead over here. Put it back over here. Um, uh, for somebody. So so this doesn't. This isn't the report from my code here. This is from some students' feedback that I gave. Okay. So I mean, um, if you don't know how to generate this yourself, I mean, this would be a good thing to learn from this class. So um, you can generate this report yourself and see if you've got any problems with your code documentation. So if you um, open up a terminal and you change into your directory, so most of you have probably been maybe not doing a lot of commands, uh, you know, build targets from a terminal, except for maybe make submit. So, so that is one that you had to do from the terminal, but you can do all these others from the terminal, including doing a make um, docs. So that will generate your documentation. If, if you get no report or no uh, warnings here, that means that all your documentation is formatted correctly, okay? So by doing make docs, what this actually does, I, I've shown this before um, in previous, videos or help sessions. But this actually creates um, um, written documentation that's extracted from your code. So you can get um, a PDF in the LaTeX, LaTeX, or you can look at um, HTML versions of your code. 
if you, if you open up the HTML and you look at, for example, you can start at the index. It's usually the pre best place to start. I'll just open this up in a browser, but um, um, like if you look in your files, like we could go to the quick sort CPP and you'll see the dictate. But again, this is being pulled directly from the, um, the, the, the function documentation. You know? so, so these parameters come from those at pram tags, the returns come from the, um, the returns tag, um, and, and this comes from the short and long description uh, from the function. So again, you know, I encourage you to do this correctly, or you know, I mean, you have to have the documentation, or I'll just return it ungraded. Uh, but but try and get it correct, you know. So for example, um, if if um, these names, oops, uh, these names have to match. So if if the name of the given for the parameter is, is different from what you give for the at param tag. Um, if you run your doc, create your documentation, you'll get a warning about uh, last is not found because the, the name last is not matching on the list there, right? So, so those names have to match. Um, you have to have a returns tag here. So, so you know, if, if it's a value returning function and you don't provide returns, um, and you generate your documentation. You'll see that you get warnings about, um, or you should get warnings that um, that the function. I wonder why it didn't, didn't look like I got it that time. Did I save that? Um, that um, the function is a value returning function, um, but uh, you're not providing the, um, the the documentation for the return value here. So. So, uh, well, it should find that. So I'm not certain why it's not finding that, but, but that's another one. You should have that, the at returns there. Um, and, and, you know, if you're just missing the documentation altogether, um, it should also give a warning about that as well. Or, um, you know, again, it needs to be two stars. So if you have just a single star or don't have the right opening tag, doc oxygen won't um, recognize that as documentation for the function here. So in this case, now both of these functions should show up as not being documented. Uh, if I um, save it, um, so yeah, you should normally get warnings. I need, I need to check that. I'm not certain why we're not getting the warnings on that. Um, but, um, but anyway, I mean, that, that's a good thing to do, okay? But, but in general, whether you're doing that or not, I mean, try and, try and get the documentation formatted correctly. You know? so, so go in here um, and um, you know, correct, correctly have your doc oxygen uh, starting uh, double star here to indicate that this is doc oxygen documentation, make certain that all these names match the parameter names and that you have one at param tag for every one of these. Um, and and you know, make certain that you have all your documentation here. I don't know what I, uh, put that back, yeah. Um, um, that, that all the functions are documented um, and that we have um, that, that you document all of your at return, you know, the, the return values and parameters and things. So here it's, it's the value that was selected as the pivot is returned in this function. All right, so that's, that's just quickly um, using the, 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 the docs here and what I mean by that you need to have these in here and correctly formatted, okay. But you know, but uh, yeah, do pay attention to these. So, so I try and give you, you know, if you had some problems with, with getting everything to work or some um, style problems, I'll try and give some good feedback here. Um, all right, so yeah, that's that's it for this video. Hopefully everybody's um, studying for um, 
the um, midterm exam this week. If you have any questions about those, let me know or come to the next help, help session and um, I can um, talk about it. But uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys uh, later.